much does the governor of New York make? Find out the answer to this question and more on this week's episode of Reality Check. Every week, we'll talk with an internet personality about what life costs, discussing their financial journey along the way. Play along to find out who's been schooled and who needs a reality check. This week, I'm joined by Louisa Joe, a former aerospace engineer turned entrepreneur who currently helps aspiring business owners launch and scale their businesses. So what's something unexpected or surprising that people might not know about you? Okay, so something that you might not know unless you've uh, seen some of my stuff for a while is that I am married to my high school sweetheart. We actually met in high school. Our parents live really close together. Um, and then, you know, we both moved to New York and we've been married. We're going on to our eighth year of marriage. That's amazing. That's like a rom-com story in real life. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so cool. Well, we have these 10 questions, financial questions that the average American probably should know, but most probably don't. So we're gonna run through those. How are you feeling? I mean, <laughs> we're gonna see what comes up for me, uh, you know? So well, yes, I'm just gonna do my best. Yes, that's all we can ask. All right, question number one. What day are annual income taxes due? Um, is it like April 14th, mid-April, mid to late April? Yes, I'm gonna give you that. It's April 15th, unless obviously the 15th falls on the weekend or a holiday or something. So yes, this year, fun fact, they're actually gonna be due on the 18th because the 15th is on the weekend oh. and then the 17th is a holiday. So buys us all a little bit of extra time there. Which state has the highest property tax rate? Oh, this is tough. Okay, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm wondering, is it like Texas? That's a good guess. It's actually surprisingly New Jersey, 9.96%. I know, oh I, my I, gosh. I was very shocked too. New Jersey. You right. know what, I would not have thought that, but now, now I know. I just thought, you know, states that have like lower state taxes, probably higher property taxes, so threw out a guess, but good to know. Yeah, that would make sense. All right, question three. How much is the governor of New York's salary? Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna throw out a number based on like, what I've seen from senatorial salaries, is it somewhere between like 150 to 200,000 a year? I will give you 200,000. It's actually 225. Oh, wow. 225,000. That is a lot Plus higher minutes. than I thought. I mean, you know, great. <laughs> New York is expensive, right. but okay, good to yeah. know. You live in New York City, right? I do, yes. Which, yeah. yeah. Which is definitely super expensive. Do you remember what your first kind of, your first maybe small win or maybe a first big win when you first launched your business where you were like, okay, I can sustain a life in this expensive city doing this thing? What was that moment? This is, I don't know that I thought it was possible to sustain a life in New York at that point, but I'll tell you the biggest win for me was my first client. And that was a $5,000 package. At the time, I didn't know that was kind of a big deal. Now I do. But what I had done was I had just calculated my salary and prorated the amount of work I was going to do for this client and just d did the exact math because my, my, my job yeah. was doing exactly what I was doing in the business. And so I provided a lot of free value to this client. They said, hey, this is a no brainer. But looking back now, I realized how lucky I was that I had all those things fall into place. But the reason I say that first client is because up until that point, I was kind of like, well, will anybody buy from me? Is this really possible? Even though I have a job and I'm paid to do this in my job, it just felt so different. When I got that first client, I remember this feeling of, oh my God, someone is <laughs> willing to pay me and yeah. this is possible. That moment, like, no, like that, I think it was one of the most impactful moments ever because of that switch. And I think that laid the foundation yeah. for the belief that, okay, cool, if I can do this, I can do this again and again and again. I don't exactly know how, yeah. I didn't know back then, yeah. but that was the <laughs> biggest turning point. Yeah, I love that. And I think that like, for every entrepreneur, it's probably different. From some, for some person, it's probably like someone responded to my email. Like they actually opened and responded to my email. Like that's something right there. I think celebrating those wins, that's a very big win. A $5,000 client is a very big win too. Exactly. So I, I recognize and appreciate it, but yeah, every, every little thing adds up for sure. All right, uh, question number four. What is the median rental rate in California? 
Oh gosh, I know it's high. Mom, I'm just gonna put it out there. Is it like three to four thousand dollars a month? Yes, spot on. It is three thousand thirty-two dollars. And as a person who lives in LA, I can attest that it is very high. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> to give people some inspiration about <laughs> if they don't want to live somewhere so expensive, let's go to what city has the lowest cost of living in the U.S. And this is actually a multiple choice. Do you think it's A. Fort Wayne, Indiana? B. Cleveland, Ohio, C, Belleville, Illinois, or D, New Orleans, Louisiana? Pretty sure it's not D. So I have a one out of three chance. Um, let me go, I'm pretty sure it's not Cleveland either. So it's either A or C. Let me go with A, Fort Wayne. You are on a roll. Yes, yes it was. Uh, <laughs> Fort Wayne, Indiana, the average rent there is only $777, oh, no. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's I just need annoying. to like let, let that sink in for a second after talking about how expensive California is. Exactly. <laughs> All right. What U.S. bank currently holds the most assets? This is not a multiple choice, is it? It is not. <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna go with JP Morgan Chase. You are killing it. <laughs> 3.38 trillion JP Morgan, Morgan oh my Chase. Gosh. It's incredible. <laughs> You're on a roll. Thank you. Five out of six. That is crazy impressive. Thank you. So one of the things that I most resonate with when I watch your videos is that you really tackle like the mentality that goes into entrepreneurship. What do you think is that first step that a person needs to take to go from just, oh, I have this idea and it's kind of cool to like actually monetizing it into something real? There are so many barriers initially that are both mental and physical. So there's the physical, which is obvious, like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if my idea is good, um, things like that. But the mental is, I think, often bigger. Like, oh my gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. How am I gonna turn this into a full-time thing that supports me? How am I gonna sustain it consistently? All of that. And so what I found is the kind of like simplest way to overcome all of that at once is to literally decide I'm gonna go out there wherever my potential clients might be. Even if I'm not perfectly clear on what I could sell or whatever, I just kind of know. Right, so maybe it's social media, maybe it's some sort of forum or group or community. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna start talking to people. And this is key, not like I'm gonna try and sell something. It's literally, I'm gonna see what questions are people are asking. If I can answer some, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna maybe even go as far as to market on my calendar. I'm gonna do it like this many times a week. And I'm gonna do it for at least three weeks. So when you do that, you're kind of taking out the guesswork of how often do I do it? What do I do? And you're just having one focus because when you start taking yeah. that action, that basically gets you out of your head. It shows you what's possible. It, it gets you into the nitty gritty, the realness of actually talking to yeah. people and saying, oh, wait, I do know some important stuff. Um, and that just gets the ball rolling more than pretty much anything else could. I love that. I think just being intentional too, putting things when it's when something's on a schedule, it makes it so real. <laughs> you actually, have to it, do it really it. does. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's if it's on your calendar, it's going to happen, or it's more likely exactly. to. If it's not, it definitely won't. <laughs> exactly. Question number seven: What is the most common job in America? Okay. <laughs> um, this I I don't even know. I'm just gonna go with you know what? I'm just gonna go with like analyst. It's pretty vague. It's actually a retail sales rep. Oh, they make really? about 30,000 per year. Yeah, retail sales rep. Wow, wait, what'd you say the, the median salary is? 30,000 per year. Wow, good to know. Yeah, see, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> I was just like, what's a generic common title every company has? <laughs> but right now I know. Everyone has, a, has an analyst on, on staff. Exactly. <laughs> what percentage of the US workforce is made up of entrepreneurs? Hmm. I feel like this number has changed a lot over the years. Um, and I feel like these days it's probably a lot higher. You know what? I'm just going to throw out a number. Is it like 40%? 16%. What? No 
Hi. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? It's because I'm in it and I'm bombarded with yeah. like all these things I see of, you know, everyone's starting a side hustle. Everyone's doing that. Right. So, yeah, this is one of those classic cases. Yep. Yeah. I think too, like one of the big differences is probably that there's a lot of people who want to be entrepreneurs and are like kind of in their minds are entrepreneurs, but haven't actually like gone there. All right, we're almost there. Question number nine. <laughs> what company is the largest employer in the US? Oh man, because I'm just thinking, I know there's so many really big companies and they have, you know, overseas employees as well. So, hmm. I'm just gonna throw out a random, uh, I'm okay, I'm torn between two totally random companies. Like, you know, on one I'm thinking Walmart, something like Walmart. Um, the other I'm thinking something like Boeing, where it's a, you know, national kind of defense contractor and a lot of their jobs are um, in the States. So I, I'm not, I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna go with Walmart. Boom, Walmart, 1.6 million employees. Wow. Okay. <laughs> You're making this look too easy. <laughs> Just honestly lucky guesses. So. Well, here we go. The reality check. The final question. What percentage of Americans live paycheck to paycheck? Oh my gosh. I know this number is so high. I like, I mean, I've read so many stats where it's like, you know, so many Americans are like, just $500 away from total financial disaster. Oh gosh. Um, like I'm pretty, I, I think I've read it's like in the 80th person, like around 80% or so. Not quite that high. 60%. Okay. okay good. Which is, I'm glad to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm glad for you to be wrong yeah. in this case too, because I mean, I do feel like 60 is still a little high. Yeah. 80 would be. 80 would be pretty extreme. Yeah. So considering the 60%, what's kind of the advice that you give either a prospective client or maybe a client that you already work with who are maybe a part of this statistic and want to break out and get a little bit more financial stability and freedom for their families? The first piece is kind of getting your money mindset in order. Um, you know, like doing basic education, first of all, on how credit cards work, on how basic budgeting works. like. You know, it sounds simple, but just through the conversations I've had with my clients and with just my community in general, you'd be amazed at how many people haven't had the chance to learn those things, right? And if you don't know how a credit card works, you're not paying off your balance at the end of every month, that alone, the interest payments can really add up and kind of throw you off your financial game. So just basic education, but also really kind of understanding how money is so much more than the math. Because if it were simple math, people are smart. We would have a lot less people in this situation. And so a really good book I like is called Tapping Into Wealth. It's written by a former engineer. So it's very logical. It's, <laughs> um, you know, but it explains how money mindset works in a way that I really helped me understand my kind of relationship with money and untangle some things around that. And so I recommend that. Once you start getting that, um, a little bit more in order, then of course it's time to tackle the physical stuff. And that looks like, well, what do I need to do right now? What can I, um, is there something that I can cut out? Is there, what plan can I do to really make the most of what I'm doing right now? Also, um, what can also help is to go back to your employer and really, if you're in a position to negotiate any sort of raise, any sort of bonus, you'd be amazed because I've worked with a lot of career coaches. So I've seen it behind the scenes, <laughs> how much extra companies can afford to pay you if you're willing to have that conversation. So doing your research and doing that, it's the you know relative low hanging fruit, working with what you have to see what you can make the most of right now. I love that. I think one of the biggest things that you just mentioned that sticks to me is the education component, like educating yourself. I did not grow up with a lot of financial education um, and have kind of made mistakes in adulthood, just trying to figure it out so before much. finally um, like taking control of my own personal financial education and yeah. arming myself with the tools to actually succeed financially. So I think that that's really important and very 
great place to start. I'm so glad you you agree. I, I was the same way. You know, my parents, they were super frugal and I'm so grateful for that. But beyond that, we didn't, we never talked money. They, you right. know, like, I was like, what is a budget? What is all this? I had to do the same thing, right? It's just yeah. another skill. You can learn it. There's no need to be overwhelmed or anything. It's just, yeah. You just learn it. There's so many that's, free that's resources what it now. Is. Yeah. Exactly. I'm, yeah. yeah and it, that's so amazing. I yeah. love that. Well, six out of 10. That's super impressive. You are number one on our leaderboard right now. You know what? I'm sure there will be, you know, plenty of people who exceed that score, but you know, I'm grateful. I got lucky. I will always be the OG, um, first person yes. interviewed. Exactly. So nobody can take that away. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for playing with us. If people are super inspired and want to learn more about you and your story, because your story is kind of super <laughs> cool. If they want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Uh, so if you are interested in learning about, you know, growing a business or anything like that, go to my website, luisajo.com. It's spelled a little different from how it sounds. It's L-U-I-S-A-Z as in zebra, H-O-U.com. And just on that page, you'll see a lot of options. I have a lot of free resources, depending on where you are on your journey to help you start, to help you grow. Um, and then aside from that, I think this is how you and I connected is my YouTube channel where I share yes. really great weekly videos that go even more in depth, fun shorts, uh, like fun personal posts and stories as well. And so my YouTube channel is just Louisa Joe, same thing, L-U-I-S-A-Z-H-O-U. You can just pop that in and find me there and start watching lots of great free videos. Yes. And if you guys miss the spelling or anything, don't worry, we're going to drop that down in the description below. So you can just click that link. Thanks again, Louisa. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Reality Check. How'd you do? Did you score as well as Lisa? Let us know down in the comments below. And be sure to join us next week for another game. See you then. Bye.